Hello guys, I'm Yadik Reddy and welcome to my channel Ashwaya Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to talk about these two attributes called time mode and expected exceptions in TestNG. So these are the attributes that are available inside the test annotation in TestNG. So we have so many annotations in TestNG, right? So out of them, test annotation is one of the important annotation. So this annotation has so many attributes. So we already discussed about some of the attributes in our previous video, right? So we have discussed about the name, we have discussed about the data provider class, we have discussed about the always run, like that. We have discussed some of the attributes already inside our previous videos. So if you haven't watched those videos, please go and watch those videos. So in this video, we are mainly focusing on two attributes called timeout and expected exceptions. So as you already watched those videos, you might have a clear understanding like why we are using the attributes, right? So at every annotation provides the attributes to achieve some functionality or to alter the functionality, right? So it will expect some data from the attributes and using the data, it will alter or it will change the behavior of the test method, correct? So like that, TestNG also is accepting some attributes inside the test annotation. So if you provide those annotation values, it can alter the functionality of the test method or it can change the functionality of the test method, fine? So this is the agenda for today's session, guys. First, we will see what is timeout and then how to use the timeout and what is expected exceptions and then how to use the expected exceptions. And apart from this, I will also tell you in which scenario we are going to use these things. And are we going to really use them in our real time scenarios or why we are actually learning these things? So all these things I will tell you inside this video, guys. So let's get started. So here, let me open the Eclipse. So I have already added some piece of code, you know, I have created one test method here and I have, you know, just added the code to open the Chrome browser and navigate to HYR Tutorials website and then simply close the browser. A very simple test guys, okay? So first let's execute this and let's see how much time it is actually taking. Then we will talk about the timeout time, time attribute in TestNG, fine? So you can see it is actually taking 4.91 seconds. That means approximately close to five seconds of time. Correct? So just note that point, okay? So what exactly this timeout is? So timeout is an attribute that is present inside the test annotation. So this test annotation is having so many attributes, right? So this timeout and accept expected exceptions are two attributes available inside the test annotation. So why we are using this timeout? If you are expecting any test method to be completed within specified time, then we need to specify that specified time inside the timeout attribute. That means, let's say I have one application. Let me take this HYR tutorials as a real time application. So according to the requirement documents or according to the, you know, SLA. So what is written is this HYR tutorials website should actually load only within two seconds of time, but where you are actually testing that where you are testing it. So tomorrow I'll give you a new build. You will deploy that new build onto HYR tutorials application and then you will start testing it, right? So first you will run the smoke test and then you will perform the regression testing if the smoke is passed. But even before performing the smoke test, first you need to verify whether the URL is loading in the stipulated time or not, correct? Or maybe a shipment should happen within 10 seconds. If you are taking a FedEx as a website or Blue, Blue Dot or any, any website, any shipment related website if you are taking. So maybe that method should take only 10 seconds to execute. But if it is taking more than 10 seconds, what are you going to do? We haven't covered that inside our videos, right? So what are you going to do? So that we can actually restrict using timeout guys. So if your method is taking more than the mentioned time, then our test ng is going to fail that method saying that it is taking more time than your mentioned time. So to achieve this functionality, we need to use the timeout attribute. Fine. So it's very simple guys. You want your test to be completed within some time so that you need to specify that time using this attribute. So if your test is not completed within that time, then test ng will mark the test case as failed and it will throw the exception also. That's it. So by, by using this concept, what you can do, you can verify which method is taking how much time, right? So you can, you know, strictly say that this method should be completed within so and so time only. If it is not completed, test ng will mark that as fail. That's it. So let's add that here and let's see. So now it is actually taking 4.91 seconds and close to five seconds. 
but according to my requirement document it should be completed within two seconds so that is my requirement so a new build has come and i want to test whether this website is loading within two seconds or not so i'm just providing the timeout here and just press control space and here you can read the description also it says the maximum number of milliseconds this test should take so when you are executing this test how much time maximum it should take so that is what this attribute is and then if it hasn't returned after this time that means if it is not completed within this time then test ng will mark it as failed fine and here you can observe one more thing guys it is accepting the time in the milliseconds format right that means whatever the time that you want to pass you need to convert that into the milliseconds and then only you need to pass here fine so that means for example if you want to wait for one minute one minute has 60 seconds 60 seconds is converted into 60 uh, milliseconds means 60,000 milliseconds and if you want to wait for only two seconds that means 2000 milliseconds so the value that you are passing here should be in the format of milliseconds so when i write 2000 that means 2000 milliseconds that means two seconds of time so i am saying that my website should be loaded within two seconds if it is not loading test ng will mark this as a failure that is my requirement so i am i'm able to achieve that requirement so let's see whether this will mark the test case as failure or not so if the test is actually completed within the time it should close the browser also because so after driver.get i have written driver.quit so if it is completed or if it is loaded within two seconds of time it should have been executed driver.quit also but driver.quit is not executed that means my website is not loaded within two seconds of time right so if you see within two seconds of time my website is not loaded and that's why testng has thrown one exception called thread timeout exception you see thread timeout exception so this is the exception that will be thrown when you are using timeout here so my method whatever the test method that i have is not executed within two seconds of time so that is why it is throwing the exception but according to my expectation it should complete within two seconds so now what i can say my build is wrong or maybe some issue is present inside my build so then i can say to the developer like this website is taking more time you know than the expected one so please look into this issue like that i can say right so maybe the login scenario or maybe the shipment scenario or any scenario if it is taking more than the expected time you can just report it back to the developer correct so in those scenarios you can use the timeout attribute in testng guys fine so the next one is expected exceptions so let's close this and the next one is expected exceptions right so let me tell you guys so this expected exception feature or attribute we are not going to use in our selenium testing at all mostly 99.99 percentage we are not going to use this attribute in our selenium testing then why we are learning this guys there is something called interview right so in interview maybe the interviewer will ask you this question interviewer doesn't want to know like maybe we are using this in the real time scenarios or not but he will just ask you this question he or she will ask you this question and you you should be in a position to answer that right so that is why we are learning this and apart from that there is no use for this you know expected con exceptions attribute in our selenium testing but it is actually useful but not to the testers it is useful to the developers so when developer is writing any unit test throughout his test he will be using this because to perform the negative testing we need to use the expected exceptions only but as a tester we are not going to use this fine so maybe after the complete explanation you will get a clear understanding so what exactly this is so let's say i have one method called abc so i am expecting this method should throw some exception called no such element exception okay or maybe io exception so maybe i am dealing with some files or something and i am expecting this should throw the io exception i am expecting that okay i am expecting that it should throw the io exception so how do i expect that you can use the expected exceptions here so if you don't mention this expected exceptions what happens whenever any exception is thrown inside the test method test ng will just mark that as a failure but it is not a failure guys i am intentionally expecting this exception so how do i verify this so if you want to expect any value what you will do you will use the assertions right so you will use the assertions and you will verify that value 
asset dot true or asset dot equals or asset dot not null something something you will do and you will verify that value so you are expecting that value and you are verifying that value like that but if you are expecting any exception out of the test method how do you verify that so to do that we are going to use the expected exceptions concept here so this is also one of the parameter inside the test method guys so test annotation so let's use that here so let me write expected exceptions so it is going to accept the class array that means you need to pass the class and it should be in the format of array that means you can expect multiple conditions so by the name itself you can say expected exceptions it's plural so it is expecting multiple exceptions so you can throw multiple exceptions from the test method so if you are expecting all those things as part of your test then you can use multiple things if you are expecting only one thing you need to just pass one thing so it's basically accepting the exceptions in the format of array so you need to enclose this inside the curly brackets so whatever the exceptions you are actually expecting you need to specify them in the curly brackets so let's say i am going to expect no such element exception inside this no such element exception so when you write no such element exception you are going to get two things guys one is coming from java.util package and the other one is coming from selenium packages okay so i want to verify only the selenium one so i'll just mention that so you should not just leave it like this you need to specify dot class here so whenever you write dot class then only it will actually return the class from here right so this is a java file but out of the java file you need to return the class so you need to put dot class here fine like this if you are expecting multiple multiple exceptions then you can write here so let's say timeout exception so i'm just randomly taking it so let's say timeout exception if you are expecting timeout exception also you can write like this like this you can add multiple exceptions whatever the exceptions that you are actually expecting from this test method you can write all those things so it's a kind of assert statement only but you are asserting the exceptions not any values fine so we are expecting this exception and let's just execute this so when your assertion is failed so you are expecting some value maybe maybe you you have created one user and you are expecting some successful message but if the message is not present what you will do you will simply fail the test case right the assertion will fail you will simply fail the test case similarly when you are expecting this exception if the exception is not being thrown then you will fail the test now you see you are expecting the no such element exception but that exception is not thrown we are just navigating to one website and then we are closing it we are not finding any element so if you are not finding any element how do you get the no such element exception you will not get it right but you are expecting it but you are not getting it so that's why you are going to throw the exception so if you read this it says this method should have thrown the exception no such element but it is not throwing so that's why it is failing it so if the exception is actually thrown because you are expecting it and maybe in the actual also if the exception is thrown it is matched right in that scenario it will mark the test as passed so let's write driver dot find element by id and i'll just provide random id a b c d so with this id i don't have any element inside my website guys okay so i'll just mention is displayed or anything you know i'll just i can write click method also because anyway this is a invalid you know thing so obviously whenever it is trying to find this element it will throw the no such element exception so this method will throw the no such element exception and it is a actual exception and i am expecting that exception so it's a match right you are expecting something and i am giving something so it's a match so in that scenario it will not fail the test case but it will pass the test case so let's execute this so it's actually negative testing guys so that is why you might be confusing actually it is actually for negative testing okay so now you see the browser is not closed that means the test is not completed so there is a exception so that's why test you know browser is not closed let's close it so because the test exception is thrown our test is passed we are expecting the exception and the test method is also throwing the exception so it's a match so that is why the method is passed the test method is passed so if the test method is not throwing the exception or if the test method is throwing any other exception than the mentioned exception then it will mark the test as failed fine so as i mentioned we are going to use this inside the unit testing 
but why we are using this inside the unit testing i mean in which scenario we are using it inside the unit testing so developers will write the code right so whenever they write the code in methods they usually expect you know they will pass some values and they will expect those values to be a valid value so that their functionality will work accordingly if the valid values are not passed what happens it will start throwing you exceptions from that method right so if you want to verify whether your code is working correctly when you are passing the invalid values also then you need to use this concept you pass the invalid value values and you use this expected exceptions so your test method i mean your unit test method should obviously throw the exception and you are expecting that exception so it's a match and it will pass the test so it is used only for the negative testing guys not for the positive testing it is used for negative testing if you want to verify any exception then you use this concept if you want to verify any value you use the assertions fine so that is this one guys so now you got the clear idea right what is timeout so timeout is used when you want to fail any test if it is not being executed within the specified time and then expected exceptions so if your test method is not throwing the exception what you expected then you mark the test as failed so as i'm telling you we are not going to use these two things in the real time anywhere we may use the first one but we don't use the second one in our selenium testing we may use the first one so if you want to verify if any test is taking so much i mean more than this time and all then you can use the first method but you are not going to use the expected exceptions anywhere in selenium testing but you need to learn it because the interviewer will ask you questions on this also so you should know what exactly it is that's it guys so thank you for watching this video if you like the video please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends thank you bye bye